So hello everyone and welcome to the scientist webinar called BioUtils and the Science Breaker, bringing academic researchers closer to STEM education. My name is Marina Jimenez and I will be moderating this session. With us today we have Massimo Fine, who works as communications officer for the academic lab based interface BioUtils. The mission of this platform is to provide material support and experimental advice for the teaching of modern experimental biology in schools. In 2015, Massimo founded a platform of science communication called the Science Breaker. As a partner of, partner of the University of Geneva, its mission is that of promoting and supporting the democratization of scientific literacy. Through a simple and innovative approach, the platform promotes, first, the diffusion of solid and rigorous scientific literacy amongst the lay people, and second, the possibility for scientists to reach out of their laboratories, getting directly involved in communication, in communicating sorry, their research to the broad public. Altogether, these features make the Science Breaker a powerful and innovative link between academics and the general public, seeking to promote the, de the democratization of scientific literacy. Massimo, in this session, he will talk about the bio uh, project and the important role it can play for the everyday teaching of local biology teachers in Geneva, Geneva. And he will also talk about the Science Breaker as an interesting platform for promoting, as I said, the democratization of scientific literacy. My colleague, Adina, which is um, using this scientist account, will be helping you with any technical problems you may have. So please write to her privately if you're experiencing any technical difficulties. At the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address any questions to our experts through the chat, but you can still post them during the whole webinar. So that is all from my side. I will leave the floor to Massimo, and I hope you'll enjoy. Good. Hello. Hello to everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Marina, for uh, the kind introduction. I would uh, also like to thank very much Scientix to give us this possibility, this opportunity to present here today our uh, two projects, uh, mainly, namely Beauty and uh, the Science Breaker. Um, I've already been uh, lucky enough to participate to the networking event in Brussels the 11th uh, in the past uh, April, and there I had the possibility to network to the participants and to uh, know a lot of exciting stories from all over Europe. I think that Scientix is doing really great in this connecting all the different projects all around Europe. And uh, for me, at least on my side, is giving a, a lot of motivation and uh, um, fueling my passion for doing what we are doing here today. So saying that, today, uh, the, pro the title of my presentation would indeed be BOT and the Science Breaker, Bringing Academic Researcher Closer to STEM Educators. As you will see, I hope at the end of uh, my presentation, uh, the idea is uh, really um, to support the democratization of scientific literacy by providing support to the teaching of uh, experimental biology in the, in the schools. This is what we are trying to do here in uh, Geneva. So very briefly, the presentation today will be divided in uh, uh, three main, uh, three main parts. In the first part, I will try to present uh, what we are doing uh, in the platform called uh, Beauty. In the second part of my presentation, I will describe a bit uh, briefly what is the science breaker and uh, which is the deliverables, the outputs of uh, this platform. And in the final part of the presentation, uh, I will mainly focus uh, on the uh, main topic of the presentation, which is uh, uh, how the two platforms together will be trying to provide a continuing professional uh, development support to the STEM educators uh, here in Geneva. So I will start with the first part. Uh, this work here. Okay, so um, I don't need to convince you that when you're teaching uh, biology in schools, in classes, there are several different uh, challenges that you have uh, to face, and these challenges, they are spacing from uh, uh, respecting, of course, the state of art of the biological research that is going very fast, it has indeed a very high pace, but it's not easy to uh, keep for um, the stakeholders of, uh, of academic environment, but it's, of course, even more difficult for teachers, as we'll see later on, that have many duties to follow during their, um, their, uh, their curriculum, their classes in, uh, in the school environment. But a part of this, uh, there are also many other different issues uh, which are going from uh, uh, the material that is very expensive when you want to do an experiment in uh, your classroom, 
the material is not necessarily be available uh, in uh, in the schools. And uh, when uh, when you have it, when for example you have available some biological samples, if you want to do some microbiological experiments in the classroom, uh, there 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 might be some uh, difficulties concerning the storing conditions. Uh, that also in this case, schools might not be. Uh, having all the facilities uh, needed uh, to store biological samples, samples in the school uh, uh, environment. Moreover, when you're, um, when you're dealing with, um, with, with different topics of biology, there might be some questions that are arising from the teaching in the classroom, and therefore a centralized point of information can really provide a plus to the teaching uh, of biology, of modern uh, biology in the classroom. So these uh, challenges were and are at the base of what we are doing uh, here at Beauty. Beauty is uh, a game of board in, uh, in French that is, uh, um, that is um, connecting the two words biology and OT. OT in French means tool. So indeed is uh, uh, really the mission itself inside the name of the platform, which is providing the tools for uh, uh, teaching modern biology, modern experimental biology in the classroom, thanks to the equipment and know-how that is directly provided from a platform uh, that is coming from the academic uh, environment, from the university that in our case is the University of uh, Geneva. In this sense, BioT Bio wants to be a real interface between the school on one side, the primary and secondary education, and the university on uh, the other side. There is one feature that is very important for our platform that it makes uh, uh, the platform uh, uh, unique. And uh, this feature is uh, its complete integration inside a laboratory of uh, academic research. Uh, Beauty is, uh, is a platform of science communication. We do science communication with a special uh, interest, with a special focus on uh, local biology teachers. But this science communication platform is completely fully integrated and embedded in a research laboratory, which is, in this case, the laboratory of Dr. Carl Perron, that is leading a research on um, the co-regulation of the resistance uh, to antibiotics and the resistance to heavy metals uh, in a, a model organism that is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So real cutting edge research is made side by side with a platform that is providing material, is providing equipment, is providing know-how to perform experiments inside uh, the classroom. Uh, the, the idea uh, that uh, is at the base of our platform allowed the arise of several different um, protocol that we propose at the schools every year. In this slide, you can see some of the protocol that we are uh, proposing and uh, they are spacing to, through different levels of education from the high school, middle school and elementary school. Uh, I am repetitive, but I want to stress out this point. And the point is that for each, um, each uh, exper experiment that we propose for the classroom, each uh, experience, classroom experience, uh, scientific experience that we propose to biology teachers, for each of these uh, um, activities, all the material is provided. And all the material means that the pipettes, uh, the petri dishes, uh, all the consumables needed to perform the experiment, even uh, uh, more complex instruments like PCR machine or uh, tools that you can find only in, a, uh, or most of the time, only in a laboratory in the academic environment. Everything is provided for the teacher for its use inside the classroom so that the teacher can use the experiment make the activity in the classroom and then bring back the material uh, consumables and not consumables so that we can uh, dispose the consumables and reuse the non-disposable, um, uh, non-consumable materials. Uh, it is, the, sim the system is very simple. We have uh, an internet site, uh, beauty.unige.ch uh, and this internet site is collecting all the different experiments, all the different activities uh, uh, that can be booked by the teachers. So the teacher simply has to, um, to, to select the activity that he, is interested, he or she is interested in providing to the classroom according to, uh, to the curriculum that he uh, or she is explaining. And uh, once the activity is uh, uh, selected, uh, there is the possibility to book the activity uh, according to the availability. Here I'm reporting one of uh, uh, the examples, um, this activity is the uh, counting of East uh, colonies, 
this activity was already winning uh, winner of uh, a Scientix uh, award, a Scientix award for material provided to teachers in 2015. This activity is simple, but at the same time has a huge pedagogical value since can really face different topics of curricular and extracurricular of biology, starting from the measuring of big numbers to the uh, reasoning in sterile condition in growing colonies from uh, single cells. Very briefly, you can start your activity with uh, um, a very simple baking yeast block. It's the same that you find in the different shops uh, or, um, or food stores. And by starting by this, um, this yeast cube block, the students, they can dissolve uh, part of it and really solve it through different dilution. So there is already the uh, concept of making dilution that it can be taught side to the concept of uh, biological organism. And then uh, once the, uh, the, the living cells, because in, in the end, these are living organism uh, yeast that are uh, proposed to students, the living cells, they can be played on petri dishes and according to the dilution, different colonies uh, of, uh, of this, um, of this uh, eukaryotic uh, uh, unicellular organism will arise, allowing uh, the, bio the biology teacher to propose, as I was saying, different pedagogical uh, topics. Once again, all the material needed to make uh, all these activities is provided to teachers, local teachers, so they just need uh, to come to the platform, take the material, do the experiment in the classroom, and then go back uh, to Beauty to bring uh, the material back once again. The platform was founded in 2007, so right now it is uh, uh, almost uh, 10 years that we are uh, doing these activities in the local uh, environment of Geneva. We start little with uh, 2,000 students that were able to get in contact with uh, this activity. And uh, now, these years, we are having an average of uh, 5,000 uh, uh, students that can uh, experiment uh, this activity in an engaging environment by putting the hands on the experiment, not only uh, listening to the, to, to the lesson, but really uh, experiencing what uh, can be making modern experimental biology with real tools coming from a real laboratory environment. With this, uh, with this uh, honest and passionate approach, we have 100% uh, 100 of the school environment in Geneva that they are taking advantage of, uh, of the services uh, of, uh, of the team. It goes without saying that this perhaps is a, uh, it's really acknowledging and push us to make more and more activities uh, for, for, for local biology teachers. And uh, um, this system appeared to be also contagious. One year ago, in fact, there was another platform that was uh, uh, launched in, uh, in Bellinzona. Bellinzona is a city of uh, the Italian part of Switzerland, and also this platform in the local em their environment is starting to make uh, um, some, uh, some experiments, some activities which are making reference to the activity that we already propose uh, uh, here in Geneva. And also in this environment, the uh, appreciation of the activity that can be done in the classroom uh, it is taking uh, more and more, uh, taking more and more audience by the local teachers. Say that there are several different um, other topics, other approaches that the platform is doing for the broad public and for the schools. So in the beginning, the platform started proposing uh, experiments to local biology teachers. But at the same time, uh, there are other services like laboratory visits that can be done of the classroom here in, uh, in the laboratory of Carperon. This allows students to see the uh, scientific environment where research is done. And once they're here, once they visit the laboratory, they can also make some small activities uh, uh, close by to the laboratory with the real researchers that can explain uh, them what is done inside the laboratory and uh, leading them uh, with the presence of the biology teacher uh, to make some activities um, in, the, in the domain of the curricula that the teacher is, um, is facing uh, in that moment. So there are different other things. There are also um, some professional courses that are made for, uh, for local teachers. There are also possibilities for students to make some uh, stage in, uh, in the platform. And also, once per year, we organize uh, a so-called microbiology day, which is uh, a big event that is collecting an average of 500 uh, lay people from the broad public that they can come to the university and uh, uh, attend to a lecture uh, with several different topics that uh, are mainly focused on social debated um, uh, so 
social debated discussion and topics like, for example, uh, the diffusion uh, of viruses, the use of vaccines, the importance uh, of a careful use of antibiotics, and so forth. So each year, the Microbiology Day has a its own uh, topic, and this once again the possibility for the broad public to interact with scientists uh, uh, from the University of Geneva. So beauty is, uh, um, is many things. We start from activities for uh, school environment, but then we space also towards the broad public uh, and the surrounding environment around the uh, university. So say that, I will now pass to the second part of uh, the presentation. In this part of the presentation, I will introduce uh, the platform called uh, the Science Breaker. As Marina uh, said in the introduction, it's a platform that I founded uh, um, one, one year ago uh, here in Geneva. In practical terms, uh, the Science Breaker is a, is a publishing uh, group from, uh, from the university. And uh, this group, the editorial board is made by professional science communicator uh, like me and uh, PhD students from the international uh, PhD program in life science uh, of the section of biology of uh, the university. And this publishing group has, uh, uh, has uh, one simple but uh, uh, very ambitious mission. And the mission is indeed the democratization of uh, scientific literacy. But before going into detail of uh, the platform, I will start uh, by providing you um, a very brief overview of what is the news cycle of scientific news nowadays, because this is the starting point of, uh, um, of all the process behind the science breaker. A scientific news is starting all the time from the research that is made inside a scientific uh, laboratories. So there is a scientific laboratory, there is uh, a research that is being done. As you can see in this, uh, um, in this nice uh, comic, once the research is made, it has a long path towards the broad public that is passing through the university office that is uh, diffusing the, the, the news outside of the university. This uh, uh, news is then taken by newswire organization, is passing through um, the internet. Now the internet is really pulling out news uh, from the scientific environment with a very uh, high and, uh, and efficient pace, let's say. And uh, you can see it's very well uh, depicted in this, uh, in this comic that the information is already starting to get changed from uh, its origin. And uh, once it is changed, it's becoming more and more uh, deformed by its original uh, meaning. And in the end, uh, the scientist has um, his grandmother that is wearing a funny hat to defend herself from the research made by the nephew. And of course, the reaction of the scientist is hilarious and is depicted by, um, by this comic. Why is he doing this? And, uh, for me, this uh, whole uh, um, image is depicting very well uh, the two different uh, issues that are arising when the scientific news is reported, uh, can, be can be arising when the scientific news of a scientific research is reported outside of uh, uh, the university. In first place, there is um, a misreception of the scientific information by the broad public, by the layman, and on the other hand, there is the frustration of the scientist that is making passion, is making effort in making uh, his research. There is a big frustration for uh, the misunderstanding that the, 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 the research that he has pursued has reached uh, outside of the university. So with this in mind, we can sum up the challenges that, uh, that the scientific uh, news is facing when he's uh, leaving the laboratory. The challenges of a good communication that have several different pitfalls that are going from the overlook of the information, the information when it's exiting of the university is overlooked. There, are, there might be some expertise limitation when uh, transmitting the information from one point to the other. In some cases, there might be some ideological biases that doesn't allow the recipient to get the message and uh, the real meaning of the scientific news. And in some information that are getting more and more uh, dangerous, there is um, uh, a willingly mispresented information and in some cases a manipulated information for uh, some uh, purposes that might not have nothing to do with the scientific information, but they, they, they might have an interest in the person that is delivering the, the information. All these together, they're leading to uh, a gap between the origin of the, of, uh, of the, the scientific news and the recipient of the scientific news. 
So there are in the, in eventually there will be a lack of shared and correct factual comprehension of the news. And this, of course, is generating discussion, is there is generating misunderstanding, is generating uh, fear and rage on one side, and the two sides are going more and more far away uh, the more the situation uh, are uh, taking place. So how to tackle this? The idea that we had when we founded, when I founded the Science Breaker was that something was essential, and this was, first of all, to bring closer the broad public, the layman, to the scientific environment, not because they need to be schooled, but because they need to dialogue with the scientists. There is the need of a direct dialogue between scientists and broad public. Scientists themselves, they need to have the tool, they need to have the possibility, they need to be challenged with science communication. And through this, there must be means, there must be tools that allow scientists to get out their uh, ivory silos, or ivory towers, and uh, engage with the public in an honest and frank discussion about the scientific news. They themselves, without any other step in between the scientific news and uh, that. Um, so to make a summary up of what is, uh, now that I explain you why we did the Science Breaker, what in practical terms is the Science Breaker? The Science Breaker is, or at least wants to be, a gap between, not a gap, uh, want to close the gap and be a bridge between the academic environment, the university, and the broad public. As you can see, the arrows, they are vice versa. There is willingly not a single arrow that is going from the university towards the broad public, and not the broad public for university, but it's really a dialogue between uh, the two different uh, parts. And this is, uh, uh, in, in my point of view, fulfilling our, our mission that is really supporting and promoting the democratization of scientific literacy. And when I say scientific literacy, I refer to the product of the passion and the motivation of, uh, um, of the work done here at the university in the academia, which at the end of the line is a scientific progress that must be useful not only for the academia itself, but really wants to be useful for society in general. It has to be a progress for all the society. Therefore, the objective that the Science Breaker has uh, in its, uh, through this mission is to promote citizen-scientist interaction, but also scientist scientist interaction, at the same time wants to be um, the possibility to address some social concern. I was telling before when I was speaking about the microbiology day of vaccine, of antibiotics, all different delicate issues that need to be discussed and they can represent an uh, important interest, an important background for citizens when they need to be um, addressed with decision making that need to be informed, for example, referendum that can refer to scientific topics. Want also to be a way to express the passion and quality of scientists. I refer to the frustration of the scientist I showed before in the comic. The passion that a scientist is uh, putting in making uh, uh, his experiment or experiment uh, and, uh, and pursuing uh, research is something that is uh, requiring some sacrifices, some methods, some attitude, and uh, the possibility to show these uh, sacrifices, this passion, through the explanation of uh, the motivation that makes him doing this research, this possibility, in our view, is giving the, giving the, um, the right channeling for the energy of scientists in keep on doing their important work at the academia. And most importantly, the platform was also to provide some uh, uh, some some common square, some common uh, environment where discussion and debate around the scientific topics can be done in a frankly and honest um, fashion, with scientists willing to uh, be addressed by question of of citizens and layperson and layperson willingly to understand what is at the base of scientific news that they can hear on the big media, on the news. Uh, um, in a discussion between friends. So, before explaining more about the Science Breaker, I need to focus on two different topics uh, uh, that uh, are at the base of the functioning of the platform itself, which are the breaker and the break. So what is the breaker? The breaker, in the end, is a scientist, is a scientist that uh, will be the author of the manuscript of the pieces that we are publishing on the platform online of the Science Breaker. As I told you before, the Science Breaker is a publishing platform and we publish stuff. The author 
of uh, uh, what is published on the platform. They are the breaker, and the breaker must be a scientist that is actively engaged uh, in uh, his or uh, her uh, research. So even though there are many other people which are mostly qualified for uh, making, uh, uh, for writing this manuscript, this thesis, we want to be a discussion, as was saying before, between uh, scientists and the public. Therefore, at the origin, the author of the manuscript has to be a scientist coming from the university, the breaker. The second important point of the platform is uh, uh, indeed the, the break. And now I will briefly explain you here which is the process of production of, uh, of the break. We are starting from a published research. The published research can be published on many different scientific journals. In this uh, uh, slide, I refer to one of the most uh, uh, famous one, uh, which is Nature. Probably you heard about Nature Science uh, Cell. And this uh, published article, they passed through a peer-reviewed publication, and these are the origin of the scientific news that is then diffused uh, uh, to the broad public on media and uh, on, uh, on different media channels. And uh, the break is basically a summary of this uh, published article, a summary written by the breaker, but it has to be written by some very strict publication policy standards, and uh, it has to be, it goes without saying, a text that is easy to understand, that is uh, avoiding the jargon, difficult jargon that is mostly used uh, by scientists when they're publishing the original article. It has to be a text that is not time consuming, it's a 700 word, not more than that, so it can be read in uh, five to 10 minutes. It has to be a text that is kept short and simple indeed. And uh, it has to offer a broad overview of the published article, which means a background of the published article, um, the scientific question behind the research, the scientific approach made to pursue the research, the, um, very briefly, the, um, the experimental procedure, most importantly, the result and the implication, the implication of the results for, uh, for the research itself and for the broad public. Of course, it takes uh, commitment to make this, uh, this piece and uh, the scientists, they will need to be helped through uh, this process. And uh, with this slide, I will explain you how this process is indeed, uh, indeed faced. So starting from the first, uh, the first uh, square of the slide, the scientific publication, uh, as was seen before, is drafted uh, uh, and is made a late, sum a late summary by the breaker. Once the breaker finished uh, the, the, the drafting of the manuscript, he or she can send the break to the editorial board of the science breaker. The editorial board, board made of professional science communicator and of scientists will evaluate the text for its consistency with the original paper, but also, and most important, for its um, understandability for the broad public. So all the different terms in jargonic or different uh, complex sentences uh, that are more for a scientific audience rather than for the broad public are corrected or are suggested to be corrected and sent back to the breaker. The breaker will then take note of uh, the correction that are proposed. And once he will uh, address all the different corrections, can send back the break to the editorial board of the science breaker. And if um, the, the suggestion will, be, uh, will have been correctly and properly addressed, then the break will be published uh, on the online platform where there will be the possibility in a blog style to make uh, some comments, some uh, observation and some discussion that can be taking place directly between the scientists and the citizen and the broad public interested in the topic. Concerning the uh, original uh, publication, the scientific publication at the base uh, of uh, uh, the break production, there can be two different ways that the topic is selected. In one case, the selection is proposed by the broad public. So the, there's an engagement from the broad public and uh, it is working indeed with the, the broad public hearing about some uh, scientific news. And uh, uh, this hearing about scientific news uh, triggers the desire to know more about uh, the scientific research at the base of the scientific news. Therefore, this question is directly addressed to the science breaker, to the editorial board. And once the editorial board receives the question, it can start looking for the paper that is referring the scientific uh, news suggested by, uh, by the broad public. Once the paper is defined, that is uh, selected, then the editorial board will start looking for a suitable breaker 
that will be willing to write the break. And once the breaker will be found and the break will be drafted, then it will be published on the on the on the online platform of the sense breaker. So this is one way that the break is produced. The second way is actually a direct engagement of the scientific community. In this case, there is uh, a scientist that uh, uh, wants to be uh, challenged, engaged with the communication of uh, an article, which can be his own article, her own article, or can be an article of uh, of uh, interest. And uh, once this article of interest is proposed by the scientist, then a drafting a manuscript of the break can be sent to the editorial board, which will be evaluating according to the path that I described before in my slide. And uh, once it will be evaluated and corrected and uh, validated by the editorial board, it will be published again uh, on the platform of the science paper. So, so far, to give you some numbers, we have uh, published uh, several different breaks coming from several different uh, environments. We have one break in social uh, sciences, then we address also breaks in pan biology, earth and space, evolution and behavior, neurobiology, mathematics, and health and physiology. So you can see we space through uh, different topics of life, life sciences. We are mostly focusing on life science for the moment. And uh, you can find all these uh, breaks on the, on the platform of thesciencebreaker.com. Up to now, uh, we have published this break, but we have received uh, several different uh, submissions. Uh, at present, 43 submission uh, um, of breaks. And this submission has been done by 50, at least 50 breakers, because for each submission, for each break, you can have more breakers participating at the same time. And uh, importantly for us, there has been an engagement of scientists coming from several different institutions, uh, 32 different institutions, with one breaker being a Nobel laureate uh, in medicine or biology, Dr. Suzumo Tonegawa, which wrote an amazing break called um, Where is the Engram? A neurobiology uh, break. Importantly, because we have the breakers, but it's also important to engage the audience. In, uh, these are the statistics from uh, um, the year 2016. And as you can see, we had uh, a worldwide audience. So the, this is in, in yellow, the different countries where a click was coming from, coming from. So you can, you can see there have been uh, um, clicks and reading of breaks coming from uh, all over uh, the world, which goes without saying is uh, for us a great achievement. So now I've uh, discussed a bit about uh, beauty. I have discussed a bit about the science breaker. And uh, uh, in the final part of my presentation, I will address how these two platforms together with their uh, true own uh, mission, they want to attempt to provide a service, to provide uh, a continuing professional development for uh, STEM educators. And before going in uh, the detail of the project, I want to go back to the challenges of teaching biology that I presented at the beginning of my presentation when I was talking about beauty. And among these uh, different challenges, we can uh, um, stress out that some of those are really um, putting some, uh, some uh, serious difficulties for the teaching of modern biology in classrooms, which is the speed of the biological research that has a high pace that is uh, really stunning. Some uh, recent publication, they are stating that there is a real data deluge of scientific publication. There is one scientific publication that is published every 26 seconds, which means that in one hour of this presentation, there will be 140 publications that have been published while I'm speaking. In 24 hours, there will be more than 2,000 publications. And I let you do the math for one month, one year, and uh, so forth. Therefore, it's a, a real mission for a biology teacher that has to organize a lesson, propose the experiment, and follow up on homeworks and, and other tasks during his lessons. It's very hard for a teacher to keep the pace of this scientific deluge, that deluge that is difficult for the scientists themselves. And for a biology teacher, it becomes even more challenging. And with this in mind, the science breaker and beauty with the collaboration of, with a local teacher, Dr. Pierre Brouin, we decided to, um, to attempt to address some resources which might have been useful for the teaching of modern experimental biology in the classroom. Some resources which would have allowed teachers to, to, to have a, a professional development, some resources that would have allowed 
to make some discussion in the classroom, uh, consistent and rigorous scientific discussion uh, about scientific topics uh, in, in the classroom. All this together, pushing forward the democratization of scientific knowledge, of scientific literacy, that is starting with the training of pupils uh, in the classroom, which it goes without saying, I don't need to tell you this, are our future generation of tomorrow. Therefore, summarizing the mission of uh, um, the project of bringing academic researcher closer to STEM educators is really starting from this massive data deluge and make some order, make some order and uh, select according to the different curricula, which are the different publications which might be interesting, publication which uh, might be addressing the curriculum or publication which uh, might represent a topic that is highly debated in, uh, in society at the time of, of the teaching. And all this together, it must become some resources that are uh, directly be usable in the, in the classroom. The mission has mainly two different objectives. A first objective is to develop, as I was saying before, continuing professional development and pedagogical material which can be used in the classroom environment and by the teacher for his own training. And a second objective is to provide uh, continuing professional development and the classroom webinars in a way that teachers, they can uh, listen about the explanation about the scientific news, about the scientific topic directly by the scientist, and the scientist, scientist him or herself, can be presenting the research in the classroom environment with the biology teacher moderating the discussion. And uh, this uh, second objective for us is very important because it's not only allowing the uh, teacher to train uh, uh, him or herself, but is also giving the possibility to students to have a professional identification with the scientist to see what is science uh, explained by a real scientist. With particular attention will be done in the project by gender equality to exit from the stereotype that science is a man-made uh, discipline. So under this uh, true umbrella, the true different objective, there will be the central um, role performed by, by the break. So this is the contribute made by uh, the science breaker. And uh, as I was saying before in the general explanation about the science breaker, also in this case, in this particular project, there will be a specific way of selecting uh, the break, of selecting the scientific publication that is explained through uh, the break. In one case will be a teacher request. So according to the news debated uh, at the time, or according to the curriculum that is uh, treated in the classroom, the teacher can send through the network that we have with local teachers here in Geneva through beauty. The question that will be, uh, as I was explaining before, uh, dissected by the editorial board, that starting from the question, which can refer to the curriculum or to the news, we can define which is the scientific publication of interest. And once we select the break, we can attempt to, uh, to define the final break uh, in the process that I explained before when speaking of the same speaker. There will be, <coughs> sorry, there will be also a second uh, way of selecting uh, the scientific publication. This is starting directly from the editorial board, which will be discussing with uh, our partner local teacher, Dr. Pierre Brawan, that uh, will allow us to select a paper of interest uh, for the curriculum or for the media, uh, for the news debated on the media. And once we'll be selecting this, uh, this article, we will find the breaker interested and then produce uh, the break. Once the break will be produced, either by uh, coming from the teacher request or coming from the editorial uh, discussion, debate and proposition, the first objective will be to develop a broad overview around the break. So it will not be only the break that will be provided to the teacher, there will be also some supplementary information and some pedagogical guidelines. In the case of supplementary information, there can be some uh, technical explanation about the uh, experimental technique involved, or some historical about the research that is referring to the scientific publication, or uh, some perspective, what it means this, um, this, uh, this publication for, for the broad public and uh, uh, for society. In one case, uh, in this case, the supplementary info will complete the break and the material will be provided to teachers for their own professional, continuing professional development. In the second case, the other material that will be developed will be some pedagogical guidelines that will be produced thanks to the experience of beauty and under the supervision of uh, our partner, the local teacher. Some pedagogical guidelines that will allow the break to be the topic of 
uh, a lesson in the classroom. So uh, um, uh, an activity that will be done in the classroom starting from a material that is coming from the academic environment an explanation of the scientific news with some pedagogical guidelines that can address the, the break, that can address the scientific topic by uh, promoting, for example, some inquiry-based uh, learning or by promoting some cause and relation uh, 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 effect analysis or by promoting some cross-curricular uh, cross activities starting from, uh, um, from the break uh, itself. All this together, we hope that this, is can, this can provide to teachers some resources that all together, they're promoting their own continuing professional development, but at the same time are offering an activity for the classroom, for the pupils, to make some activities that are scientifically, scientifically sound, rigorous, and possibly effective. As I was saying before, the second part, the second objective of the project will be starting from the material produced in the first objective part. So we'll, we will be having a, a break with the supplementary info and a break with the pedagogical guidelines. In the first case, the break with the supplementary info will be the base for a continuing professional development webinar series where the scientists will be able to address the teachers and discuss with the teachers about, um, about the scientific publication that has been translated by the scientist him or herself in a break that it has been offered to the teachers. In the second, in the second case, the, we will be starting from the break plus the pedagogical guidelines. And in this case, the webinar will uh, be addressing directly the classroom, directly the pupils, and the, the, the biology teacher can be the moderator of the session, can introduce the topic before during the lessons, and then the uh, pupils and the students, they will be able to address directly the scientists. So, so there will be not be uh, any more uh, imposition of the knowledge coming from the scientists, but already at the beginning, already at the start of the discussion with, uh, with the students, there can be an interaction with the background knowledge of students, with questions coming from students, which in many cases, at least from my experience uh, as a scientist, uh, are questions that are really uh, straightforward and are, pro are promoting the question themselves, the scientific reasoning uh, of the scientist doing his uh, everyday job. So to give you some uh, overview of the deliverables and uh, of the diffusion of, uh, of, of this project, we are planning to give um, 24 breaks along the academic year 2017-2018. As I was explaining before, side to these 24 breaks, there will be at least 48 uh, documents which can be supplementary information or pedagogical uh, guidelines. This material altogether will be distributed uh, along the year through six different newsletters. There will be one newsletter every uh, two months, and the material will be in this way diffused to local teachers. And then the, the, the webinars, there will be continuing professional webinars, four of them, and also four uh, classroom webinars, plus one, one pilot webinar, which will be uh, performed at the beginning of, uh, of the project. And all the material together, so the breaks, uh, the pedagogical and experimental material, and the webinars will be then uh, be available uh, for everyone to be downloaded, to be, to be used on the beauty uh, site, which is uh, https beauty.ch. Uh, uh, to finish this, so that we can have a proof of concept uh, of, uh, our, uh, of our approach that we are planning to introduce, uh, as I was saying, uh, next year. Thanks to the Scientix Network, actually, I was contacted by uh, Rosalind Lohmann, which is a, she is an Irish biology teacher, and she contacted us um, for uh, an interest about a paper which was addressed during the teaching uh, of her lesson, especially during uh, uh, a curriculum content which was addressing uh, the concept of one gene, one protein, but also uh, modern biology um, concepts like DNA mutilation, uh, the development of the fetus evolutionary biology, uh, biology at the same time, developmental biology at the same time, inheritance uh, and influence of very environmental factors on, uh, on genes. And uh, once we received this question, as was uh, explaining before, we uh, looked for the proper breaker, which in this case, uh, we are lucky enough for the, one of the same author of the paper to accept to, to draft a break uh, about uh, the publication uh, that she did. And uh, soon after the request made by Rosalind, we were able to publish the, uh, the break, which was very nicely, very neatly and clearly explaining the approach of her research 
And uh, Rosalie, after that, we provide the break. She told us that uh, she could use the, bre the break in the classroom environment. And she herself, she proposed some pedagogical extension that uh, they were um, applied in the teaching and in the lesson uh, during the classroom. So that is the end of my presentation. And before I conclude, I would like to, to thank all the team of Beauty and the Science Breaker. The head unit of Beauty is, uh, um, is, uh, is done by Carl Perron and Patrick Linder. The whole team is made by Sandrina, Aurelia, Verena, and me. And close to the team of Beauty, there is the team of the Science Breaker that is putting a real lot of passion and good energy in uh, every achievement that we do in the platform, like all the rest of the team, of course, of Beauty, which are Massimo, Carlos, Margot, Aurelia, and Oscar. And here below, you can see the link to the different uh, website of Beauty and uh, the Science Breaker. And of course, if you would like to inquire for a break, please do not hesitate to write an email to break at thesciencebreaker.com. We will be more than happy to try to address your question and to provide you some uh, pedagogical resources uh, in the, the form of a break for the teaching. So that's all for uh, my presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be very happy to discuss them with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Massimo. It was uh, an incredibly interesting uh, webinar, I have to say it. And we actually have a lot of questions. The chat has been incredibly mm -hmm. active throughout your whole presentation. So I've been um, collecting them all. I will address them to you. I'm, I'm going to start by the first one, which are going to be uh, related to the BO deals um, project. Yep. So the first one is from Julia, and she's asking if the website provides uh, resources only in French language, or which languages do they provide the resources in? Mm -hmm. So for the moment, the resources are indeed in French, are for our local audience. We have some resources that have been translated in English and some of them that have been translated in Italian as well for the platform that is operating in the Italian part of, uh, of Switzerland. But most of them, unfortunately, are in French. We are working on having them translated also in English for a broader uh, audience, but for the moment, most of them, they are in French. Okay, good to know. Um, the second question also related to the same project. Um, Heli was asking uh, who is financing the practical lab kit? So we have a source of uh, financing that are mainly provided by uh, the university and by private uh, founding agency that are supporting our work done here in Geneva. Okay, um, the third question also on the bureau team, it was by Ariana and she's asking, are the materials for the experiments available only for three schools? I think you kind of responded to this also. Uh, yeah, I mean the protocol are open access. So all the different protocol, uh, all the different know-how that we provide on the website is, uh, uh, is available to be, to be used by anyone that is uh, uh, lending on the website. But for the equipment, for physical uh, reason, uh, is only for uh, a local audience. We provide also audience coming from outside of the region of uh, the Canton of Geneva. There are some uh, schools that are coming from the Canton de Vaux, which is uh, the region of Lausanne close by to Geneva, and also from uh, uh, the close by region of France uh, surrounding Geneva. But as I was saying before, for physical uh, reason uh, of transport of the equipment, we are providing uh, local teachers for the moment. Okay. Uh, the next question is from uh, Martina Lala, and she is asking if teachers can attend experiments to acquire experience in labs. She is uh, a physics teacher with a master's in teaching, in teaching physics, chemistry, and biology, but she says she has no lab experience, and she only knows the experience the experiments in theory, so I guess that's the problem. Yeah. So here in Geneva, we have a system uh, that uh, I believe can be exported uh, and can be proposed by different teachers also in other, uh, in other part of, uh, of, uh, of Europe. And this system is called uh, um, Formation Continue in, uh, in French, and is offering the possibility to teachers to come here at the university and practice with some experiments. In a particular way, most of the experiments are proposed by the platform by Beauty, they can be experienced by teachers either during this uh, session, there are open sessions uh, for many teachers at the same time that are putting their hands on the experiments uh, uh, that we propose, or very, very simply, very openly, the teacher uh, can contact us here in Geneva and ask uh, to make some, uh, uh, some, uh, some hands-on, some practice on the experiments 
before doing them in the classroom. Of course, this is a one-time, two-time uh, activity. It's not a complete training for uh, lab activities, but some uh, small steps inside the world of the laboratory can definitely be done by platforms like Beauty and can be proposed by laboratories uh, in uh, the city where the biology teacher uh, she is working. I believe there is quite some open. Uh, um, open mind by uh, by scientists, by academics in uh, um, promoting their knowledge, in diffusing their knowledge, their technical knowledge towards uh, other uh, stakeholders of education, like the biology teachers in this case. That is all the questions for regarding the BOEP project. Now, moving on the science breaker, breaker initiative. Um, we already had some comments from teachers saying that they didn't know what they were breakers already, so they just learned the term now, which is really good. And the first question is from, well, actually, Teresita is sharing a similar project that it was done at the University in Italy, and she actually shared okay. the link on the chat, so if anybody is interested, they can, they can see it there. And then from Iraklis, he's asking uh, whether the lessons are only for biology, if you're considering creating materials for other sciences. Well, we are definitely open to other sciences. Uh, we have published also a break in uh, um, astronomy, and uh, we are trying to collect some break from uh, chemistry, from physics. Um, but for the moment, our network is mainly in life sciences and in biology. So this is what we are publishing at the moment. We are trying to expand also to our disciplines, and I hope, I'm quite confident that with time, we'll be able also to propose breaks in many other fields of scientific research. Then he's also asking uh, whether the materials are open to the public and whether he can download it and use it in his school. You're meaning the material, uh, you mean the breaks? Sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, which, uh, which material? The, the break, you mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, yes, the, the break, they are, um, they are open access on the, on the website. They can uh, be used definitely already in the classroom environment. We apply some creative common copyright for the reproduction, for the reproduction of the material, but uh, it's definitely shareable and usable in, uh, already now in the classroom environment. Okay, we actually have uh, another question that we just uh, wrote down now. Uh, Teresita is asking, I'm reading, uh, do, you think, do you think to use a teacher as revisor of the article in order to be sure that the article could be understandable by students? Or is there different types of uh, release, maybe something rich in images to be usable with very young people? So that is a very good question. The peer review made also by, uh, by teachers is something that by teachers and by broad publics is something that we would like to, impl to implement uh, with time in the, the copy editing of the, the break produced by the, by the scientist. Uh, for the moment, not yet. For the project that we will be proposing, uh, uh, we hope we will be able to propose next year, there will be a, a direct interaction partnership with the local teacher and he will uh, uh, eventually and potentially participate to the editing of the break uh, before being then proposed to the local teachers. So our partner, our local teacher partner, will participate in the editing before they are proposed to students and pupils. I don't know if I'm addressing also the second part of the question with this uh, answer. Yes, I, I think that's, uh, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that's all. We do have another question regarding BOT's um, resources in the Scientix website, but I guess that's um, up to us to discuss. And uh, yeah, we have a lot more comments saying that they're all breaker teachers. So I guess that, that's really good. Good. Um, so if there's no other questions, I don't see any other questions. I think we'll leave it uh, for now. Uh, it was, again, uh, incredibly interesting. And I think everyone in the audience um, was really engaged. So thanks again, Massimo, for your presentation. We Thank you very much. Thank you to you, uh, to the audience, uh, and to the teacher for the enthusiasm and for the energy. It's really, Thank you. really acknowledging for us. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, and for the audience, we will share the recording of, of this webinar soon on the Scientix website, and we will email everyone about it. So thanks again, and see you soon. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.